Hi everyone, it's Jan and I've been making tons of these fun shabby shamrocks and I love how they turned out and I want to show you how I did it. You know I love when I can take a tool I already have and find another way to use it. And so to make these I'm going to be using watercolor paper and then I wanted three different sizes so I'm using these three heart dies but you could use a punch or even just cut out some heart shapes. Um, this die is from Paper Tray Ink and I believe it's their heart prints. To make a single shamrock, I wanted four leaf clover, so you want to make sure you have four, um, punch out four or cut out four in each size that you have that you want to do um, one. Now, the first step that I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down just some texture, some visual texture. I'm using script, but you could use a wood grain or some spots. But you want to be sure and use archival ink. I'm using Archival Ink by um, Ranger, but you could use Stazon or something like that. You just don't want something that is going to um, run when you put wet media on it. Now, I'm going to stain these up with Distress Stains in, I believe, Mowed Lawn, Peeled Paint, and then I have some gathered twigs there. But you could also do this technique with your ink pads. I got those out to show you, and I just kind of moisten them. And you can see right away why we want to be working with watercolor paper. Um, it absorbs really well, and it's not going to fall apart because we're going to, I, you know me, I'm just going to keep playing around with these until I get them the way that I want them. So make sure you start with paper that can stand up to the, how um, hard on the paper the technique is going to be. You, if you use watercolor paper, it's not going to pill or tear very much. And you can see I'm not trying to get the color evenly on there. And If you hate getting ink on your hands, wear some gloves. But I don't want to paint it on at that point because I want it to be modeled. I'm going for kind of a in nature kind of look, which is why you'll see what I'm doing now. You know you can leave out any of these steps that you don't like. But I wanted my um, shamrocks to be a little realistic, so I put some gathered twigs up there, and then I've got some mud lawn back as well. And I'm just spotting them, because you know if you go out in your yard and pick up, um, or pick a little clover, it's going to have some brown spots, and, and, um, and just, there's going to be dark spots, light spots, the, the, they just are not one solid color. And so... We're going to be moving into making these dimensional, so, you know, these spots are going to um, just kind of help contribute to that realism. And then I wanted some near those edges, and so I'd pick them up and, and just spot them. But this is not something that you have to worry too much about. It, I am being very random. If I felt like something was a little too brown, I went back and added some green. But again, when you see how these end up, you'll realize how um, lighthearted and free you need to be when doing this, okay? So now that I have those, and I actually have let that dry, um, I wanted to add some light in, and you may want to do something like color shine, gold color shine, but I decided to go with some Delusions spray because I know that it's going to, I wanted droplets is kind of what I wanted, but I also know that because the Distress Ink reacts with liquid, that that um, dilution spray is going to actually become pale green as it sits there. So you notice I'm not um, patting them down. I just let them dry. Now to make them dimensional, I'm using this um, toolkit from, I think it's Susan Tierney with Sizzix, but you might already have some things that would work. This is a foam pad and a little piece of um, craft sheet. And that is what's going to let me make um, these, shape these leaves up. But I'm going to add a little bit of darkness to them right around the edges. And I find that it's easier to do this part um, while they're still kind of flat. Um, not going to worry too much about the back side, but I'm going to take that stylus, and I have a large ball um, there, and I'm just pressing down into that pad. And the reason that I have the craft sheet in between is because that I found out the hard way that, that if you start 
rubbing on your leaves with um, while they're directly on the foam pad, it the the green transfers. It was just a personal preference, so I just put that in between. the The tool that I'm using right now is a loop tool, and it actually um, does a great job of kind of adding some dimension to that. So you see what. When you're using the stylus or that loop tool, you're breaking down the fiber so that you can pick it up and bend it, and it just makes the paper a little more malleable, um, and it'll hold the shape really well. I'm telling you, I love these little leaves. I'm more than you even see on on the screen here. I made so many of these. I turned some of them into the shamrocks that we're going, but then I ended up deciding, well. I love these. I'm going to tuck these behind flowers and everything else. So this clearly is not um, a project that is just good for making clovers. I just, I made a lot of little leaves while I was doing this. I just, I love how they turned out. So I did three different sizes. And the one that I'm working on right here is the very small one. And I just think they're, everyone's different. That's what I love about doing these kinds of techniques. You can see they each have a very different look to them, but they're going to work well with one another. Now, one of the things that, the last thing that I do to kind of form it, and I'm sorry that I got out off camera there, is I use those tweezers, and I, I just want to pinch the end of it um, together. That, so eventually when we put the wire in there, um, it's going to kind of, curl around that wire and make it look a little more natural. So there you go. Now to make the clovers themselves, I'm using this floral wire that is pretty small gauge wire, but it's covered with um, some thread. And I, I'm i showing you here, I cut the first ones that I did, I cut a little long. I cut them about three or four inches. You certainly don't need that much. Um, but for each shamrock, you're going to need four lengths of, of your wire. And here's the thing that made it pretty easy. You can see I'm working now on my silicone mat because I'm going to um, use my heat gun. But I just use those little needle nose pliers and I wrap the wire around it, kind of making a flat circle landing place. And that's where I'm going to... That's what I'm going to put against the back of the leaf with the hot glue um, and that little landing site with all those fibers and threads that are um, around that will just that will really give it a place to grab onto and, and stick really well. So here we go. Um, I'm using the not as hot temperature. This is a dual temp glue gun. Um, it didn't. Need, I didn't need it to be that super, super hot. And when I did it the first time with it on the high heat, it was throwing up steam and everything else because those leaves still had some moisture in them from all of the, the stain that I had done. You probably are familiar with your glue gun. You'll know what you need it to do. But you see, I'm just nesting that little circle down in there. If you need to, you can turn it over and press it down onto that mat. Um, so once I had gotten all of them glued to their stems, this is how I actually form it. And I take two at a time and I place them face facing together. Then I take the third one and put it behind one on one side and then on the other. So you basically have a stack of two and two facing each other. And then you're going to take one of those wires and hold it them really close and twist it right at the base of all of those. Once you have it down a little bit, I just twisted the wires all the way together down the stem. I didn't know what all I was going to need these for, so I left a little bit of that longer stem in case I wanted to put one, some in a wreath or something like that, a floral arrangement. But then you just spread them out and play with them, and you have a really wonderful shamrock. Easy peasy. So let me show you just one more time. I think this is a medium sized one. And you can see how well that little um, landing spot 
gave me a good place to hold on to it. And, and you want it to be good and secure. If you had just put the wire alone back there, when we started doing all of this twisting, there wouldn't be as much um, stability in the leaf to be able to turn it and twist it and manipulate it the way at least I know that I was going to when I get, when I get around to using these. But you can just see it really quickly, they just come together. And as I was forming them, you know, the, the shamrocks that you see, actually, they're not kind of right across from each other. They have that little opening over there on the, where the stem comes down. There's a little bit of a space. But just play with them. Okay, so they're gorgeous the way they are, but you know me, it wouldn't be a Jan project if she didn't get a little Distress Crackle out, put a little Distress Rock Candy um, glitter on it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm putting a medium coat of the Clear Rock Candy so that it can kind of crackle and, um, and be distressed. I love using it to, to attach this glitter because it dries matte. So you don't, you're not dealing with um, shiny, shiny kind of liquid glue that you would put on top of it. Plus you get the cracking and since these are kind of shabby anyway, I think that really does lend to it. And I think you saw me in the last one, but I just want to remind you that if you haven't seen me do this before, that I don't just dump the glitter down. I put it in the spoon and I actually hold it six to eight inches above what I'm trying to, to glitter so that it's not just solid, solid glitter. But don't they turn out great? I felt like they did. And I've got some cards that I want to show you that I created with them. I used some um, in a little floral arrangement that I've already given away and I made some cards and then I, like I said I have a bunch in my stash. So um, I, there are just so many things that you could do. Um, I don't think they just have to be for St. Patrick's Day. I am, um, a few of the cards I made were more like good luck cards that, you know, I'll just hang on to until somebody needs a little encouragement. I think we all have a little bit of the Irish in us, particularly around St. Patrick's Day. And however you celebrate, um, I hope that you have had a great one. One of the things I want to share with you as we're taking a look at these last few cards that I worked on is I want to share an Irish blessing with you. It's one of those memories I have from childhood that is just near and dear to my heart. And I didn't even know it was an Irish blessing until I was an adult. But blessing says, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. That's my blessing, my wish for you as well. I'm so grateful for each of you that I get to share this time with you, this creative time. And, and I'm grateful for you. I'm blessed by you. If you are a new subscriber or you're new to my channel, please subscribe and, and visit my blog for more inspiration. I hope you will follow me on Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. want to stay in touch with you. You all take care, and I hope that you have some time for creative play this week.